Hey, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared, and I'm really happy to show you the new features in version two of our user interface software. Um, what we're gonna do in this video, it's an informal video, hasn't been staged or anything, so if I make some mistakes, I apologize. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna explain it this in the format of you have no idea. You just got your brand new MAD machine. You're all excited. You want to run it, and you got no clue how to get anything going. Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to show you pretty much everything you need to know about running this, this machine. So, first thing we got to do, obviously, is we got to start the program that we're going to talk to the machine with. Now, what we've got here on the MAD is we have a computer with its own operating system inside the machine itself that controls all the movement commands, everything to do with the actual machine operation. We have another industrial computer on the back of this, and its sole job is to show you a pretty interface and talk to the main controller. Well, we've already started the controller on the computer. We walked back, turned on the on switch, and she's powered up. Now we're going to double click the MAD GUI icon right here and it just says that stands for MAD graphical user interface MAD GUI and it's found the controller and it's starting the controller that takes about 10 to 15 seconds all right while that's doing that let's walk over here and talk about machine movements how the machine knows where to move everything is issued to the machine in a program um, language called G code and believe it or not there's only four commands that will tell the machine to move G0 I want you to rapid as fast as you can go to a point in a straight line G1 is I want you to feed in a straight line to a point at a particular speed. And then, of course, G2 and G3 is a clockwise and a counterclockwise arc at a certain feed. So what I'm getting at is you've told the machine where to go to in the G-code or your CAM program has. How does the machine know where the heck that position is? All right, what it does is all machines have um, reference positions that they call home. There's their master reference position. Home on burn machines, laser things like that are typically to the far left rear now that will set uh, the coordinates to zero zero so let's talk about the axes for a minute and what we're talking about on a machine we call these machines XYZ platforms doesn't matter if it's a water jet a wood router a plasma it just doesn't matter they typically got three axes X axis we're moving left and right with X plus the numbers getting bigger to the right Y axis we're moving fore and aft with the numbers getting larger to the rear and you, if you're if you've already thought ahead you're gonna go well how are we gonna move around if the numbers are getting bigger to the rear I'll tell you that then we have Z of course with Z plus going up you know so what we need to do to get the machine to where she'll operate is we have to home it which will set that will take the machine to that reference position so now another thing about our axis we actually put labels on the machine so that until you get used to it you'll know where it's at it's going to take you about 10 minutes to get used to it anyway here's the user interface right here of our new version 2 we got a machines turned on nothing's happened it's time to get it to move first thing we're going to need to do is go to the top left up here and click the power button currently showing red now it's green you'll hear a click on the machine and what it's done is it's energized the drives we can now move this machine well actually we can't I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute but the machine has the power to move right now all right so remember we said the very first thing we got to do to move the machine is it's got a it's pretty much got to know a home right well up here in the top left we have a home um, we have a home box. It has little pictures of houses where home all, home X, Y, and Z. You really only care about the home all and the home Z. So let's first start off with what would happen if we hit home all. So we're in this area here, right? We got done cutting our last job. We're at the front of the machine. Home all is going to first, it's going to home the Z axis, and then she's going to relatively slowly move to the rear of the machine. We don't want the machine wrapping it around. You just turn the machine on, you know? So it's, because you've got to remember, the machine does not know where it's at until you've honed it. So right now she's moving at a relatively, you know, leisurely pace to find home. No problem on this little 4x4. This is our test mule right here. We do all our testing on the 4x4. But if you're on a 5x10, you know, you got a little bit of distance to travel right there. Now I'm going to explain to you how we fix that. Anyway, the machine now knows where home is at. And for real quick here, let's just talk about how to move the machine around. 
you have you're basically I, i'm an old school guy i'm not one of the new generations but they all seem to be into movement commands similar to the games you know so um since my son is of that generation who did the software that's what he picked um i'm more of an arrow guy which hopefully we'll have in version three but right now if you play games you know how to move my machine or our machine you've got w is going to move away which we can't move now we're already up and then you've got s is y minus and you can see its movement real quick let's talk about the three speeds of the machine when you're manually moving right now i don't know if you can see it real good i'm actually moving the machine pretty slow this is our slow mode and it's for pretty much fine tuning where you want to put the torch if you're going to start a cut or do something if you press the um by the way these keys are actually labeled up here they'll it, you know if i want to know hey i want to move x plus how do i know what key it is it's the D key. They're all in a little format right there, real easy to get to. Anyway, here's D slow. Now, if you hold the shift key down, you're going to go to medium speed, which is about 600 inches a minute. Interesting fact, that's actually 100 inches per minute faster than one of our main competitors' top speed. But let's go ahead. This is medium speed right here. You know, so D is moving to the right, A is moving to the left. Let's go ahead and press the control and the shift key together and then hold down the D. Now you can see what's going on right here. You know, we're obviously we're moving a whole lot faster. That's about 1250 inches a minute because we're using servo motors and not stepper motors. So we get a lot of extra speed. So anyway, you now know how to move the machine around using the keyboards and everything like that. You kind of know how to home it, but let me show you another feature that we did. Over the years testing these machines, a lot of times we, we would do something like turn the machine off and leave it at this position up front right here. So my son, he got tired of basically watching this thing home for 15, 20 seconds on a, a 5x10. So what he did, he added a feature to where, let's go ahead and kill the drives. I clicked on that top button, let's turn them back on. And what we can do now is we can home just the Z axis, you know? Um, and then what we're gonna do here is, um, in fact, you know what? We're gonna shut the whole thing off and turn it back on. I think it, it gives you a little better example of what's going on. So once again, we're back to the start, turned on the controller, turned on the, on the, the unit right here, and the machine's looking for the controller. They got to set up their communication protocol, so it takes a couple seconds, a few seconds. I'm the kind of guy stamp puts instant coffee in, inside of a microwave and yells, hurry up, you know? So 10 seconds for me sometimes feels like an eternity. All right, here we are, we're up, right? We're back to square one. This case, let's energize the drive. So let's pretend we're on a five by 10 machine and we're at the front right corner. It's gonna take a little bit of time for that bad boy to get back there to home. So what Devin did was he made it to where we can now home just the Z axis. Now, once the Z axis is homed, the machine will allow you to move the X and Y axis at full speed using the keyboard. For instance, right now we can zip along like this right here, right? Now there's a hazard doing that. The machine does not know where it's at. It has not set home, so it doesn't know where the bumper guards are so it doesn't crash, it doesn't run into them. And I'll give you an example of that. Like right now, we're gonna crash the machine. This is what would happen if you home Z. And these machines are built tank tough, so don't worry about it. I mean, you don't crash it all the time, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like, it's this right here. We just crashed at 1,250 inches a minute. The machine's fine. It killed the drives right there, of course. Turn them off because they would have aired out. So we're gonna turn back on the, the drives, hit the home Z again, and at this point, we re home Z. This time, we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're gonna race to the rear, but I'm looking at the machine and I'm stopping it before it crashes, right? Now, let's pretend this was a five by 10, right? We got back there pretty quick. Now I'm just gonna hit the home all button. And if you notice, she only had to move a short distance. That's a feature that we added, but that, that shows you how crazy we are about features. And we look at all the details and that was one of the ones we came up with. Okay, so at this point, I'm hoping you understand it. You can move the machine around and to recap, the machine is at machine 
home zero now. So uh, in a machine, what we're talking about about that coordinate system, as, as the machine moves this way, the machine coordinate is going to be an x minus number because the x, x axis is going this way and y gets bigger than that way, right? Well, if you look at your CAM program, typically all everybody's going to write this program to where it's going to put x zero, y zero at the lower left corner of where they want to be cutting, you know? So how are we going to accomplish this when the machine thinks x zero, y zero is at the back we can't be cutting behind the machine the solution and this goes for it doesn't matter if you're running a CNC milling machine a laser my machine or our machine or whatever it's a it's a solution called work coordinates remember these machines run on G code remember we talked G0 G1 and all well another one of the G codes is the work coordinate or the work offsets you know and right here if you look below uh, oh let me show you one more feature real quick I'm sorry um, let's just say you're here and you're ready to load a plate up right and you don't want to manually do this we got tired of that too we actually took this lesson from one of our lasers if you go back here you can now hit park all and the machine since it know where it's at it's going to wrap it out of the way so you you could now load your your work pieces on it and that's called the park function and they're designated by a giant P kind of like a parking sign in a parking lot all right let's get back to work coordinates real quick you have numerous work coordinates that you could set and they're G54 G55 56 etc and what they're going to do is they're going to tell the machine I know you think x0 y0 is up there but when I run this program I want you to think x0 y0 is where I tell you it is you know so what we're going to do is we're going to move the head to where we want it to think x0 y0 is now this is where the features of moving the head slower come in where we could hit the buttons and all because we're not going to want to obviously you know you can't, you know, 1,250 inches a minute is too fast to fine tune. So that's why we would use the slow system. So we move the torch there and we say, hey, I want to cut that part out right here. My CAM program has generated all numbers figuring X0 and Y0 is here. And, and you know, that's really a readability issue because the human mind would rather work with positive numbers than negative numbers. So that's one of the reasons we're going to do it. There's another reason I'm going to tell you about in a second. All we have to do now is we can come over here, we can pick one of these work coordinates. G54 is the default coordinate and that is you're, you're going to use that 99% of the time so why do we put the other work coordinates in there and the reason we did we built this machine to where it's a fairly easy thing to put attachments onto the table etc let's say you had the router attachment on it and you knew that every time I put my my wood holding fixture in the machine I was at a certain point you may just go ahead and tell your cam program default to G56 and that would be the lower left corner or where you normally do your wood routing. At that point, you don't have to set it no more. It, it's going to know where, where it's at. So let's go to G54, and we've selected that. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit set zero. And um, let me get over here. And what's happened, I don't know if you can see it in this one screen. Now, we all are going to have other videos that are just screen specific, you know, talking about this. Right now, obviously, it's a little harder to see it, but don't worry about it. If you look here in the lower right panel, we have three distances or three coordinates they're telling you one is the machine coordinate so for instance it's telling us the machine thinks it's at x 11.2 something and minus 18 something but the work offset it says i'm at zero zero which is what you want in your cam there's another measurement or system over here that tells you distance to go and what that does is as it comes up on the different lines of code telling word machine where to go it's going to tell you right there okay this next command is telling me to go this much to the right left or up you know why would that be important it's a debugging fixture when you're running your program for the first time let's say you're right here you're a couple inches off the right side of this plate and you're debugging your program and you look down there and you see distance to go x5 which means she's moving you know five inches over well you could tell right away this is this is a bad thing you know we're going to run off the plate that's what distance to go is it's really for a debugging fi feature so you've got that over there anyway we have set zero right here and in the continuation of this we have another feature in here called go zero 
And this is really setting us up for version three to where we're gonna have what's called program restart, where you have your nice pretty graphical interface. You can mouse pick an element off that and we will actually generate a new program that will optimally restart that program from that point. In other words, we wipe out everything you've already cut, rewrote the rewrite the program for you. We're extremely excited about version three. Uh, anyway, the go zero function, what happens is when you set a work coordinate, we automatically um, basically store that coordinate on the hard drive. So let's say the power goes out in the building and you're totally done, this machine will restart. Now I'm going to demo that for you. Um, in fact, the demo, we're going to do it the, the hard way. We're going to turn off the controller, which means we've disconnected communications between it. We're going to restart it. She's going to start up, go through its procedure, and I, I, want, I want you to see this happen. And that way, um, later on in the real world when you run into this problem you're going to know okay this is this is how i'm going to fix this problem okay we're up and running once again we're going to do our trick we're going to power up we're going to home the z-axis because i don't want to wait on this thing to get to the rear back there and we are going to zip back to the rear and like i say I, what i'm doing here is i'm looking right here I know that this is as far as I can go. So I just let up the button when I got close. I know the same thing in the rear before I hit the rubber bumper stoppers um, that I'm going to stop. And that's, that's, what I, that's what I was looking at just now. Now I'm going to hit home all, bam, we're home all, right? Now let's pretend in our instance we were running a very complicated program. It could take 30, 40 minutes and the power goes off in the building. I mean, you are dead, you're done, right? Well, what we're looking for is the machine has been home so it knows where it's at. We're able to just hit this go zero button and she will return to the last place that you set zero. Why? Well, that program, when you started it, it started at that point. So we want to make sure that we go to that point. And once again, this is setting us up for version three with the complete program restart. Probably one of the most sophisticated solutions in the industry. We're incredibly excited about it. We're working hard on it, by the way. All right, so we now know how to do that. I hope you have a little better understanding of work coordinates. The machine now thinks when it runs a program, X zero, Y zero is right there, etc. Look at my other videos on how to operate for instance she cam and everything and I'll talk a little bit more about coordinates in there and you'll see what the heck we're talking about how these things generate the code all right let's move over to the middle panels real quick oh by the way another simple panel we'll get it out of the way if I want to load a program let's just go ahead and hit the file button you know just like you see in Windows or, or whatever and it's gonna say let's pick a program so this one here we're gonna pick uh, a little bracket program you say okay, it will load it into the right side viewport of the, um, all the G code for that program is there. You'll notice we have VCR controls, play, pause, and stop, you know. All right, that's pretty much all there is to talk about that. Now let's go to the middle, uh, the middle of the user interface. And what we have, let's start at the top of it, we have an input box. In the input box, you have an indicator for the emergency stop button, the torch breakaway, and the breakaway override. If we hit the e-stop for any reason, we need to emergency stop this machine, you know, you'll see the e-stop will go red and it will automatically kill the drives. Obviously, we do not want the drives still moving, you know. So to get it off the e-stop position once you've corrected the error you're going to turn this e-stop button will pop back up and you're going to re-energize oops I hit the wrong button you're going to re-energize your drives by hitting the power on button at that point hit the um, home deal and you're and you're back up and running you're good to go so that's your e-stop now another error condition is you're cutting along and the uh, piece of metal flips up or does something and the torch is dislodged. It's, it's bounced off this thing. Remember our machines have torch breakaway and docking to where you can go from one torch to the other. Well the lever that is telling us, working the switch that's telling us that the torch is actually still on the machine is located right there and you'd put it on like that. But let's just say you hit a piece of metal and she dislodged it. Over here your interface is going to indicate you've got a breakaway situation and it's going to kill the drives once again so you don't damage your torch by this thing trying to drag this torch along. So what we would do in this case we're going to reposition the torch back in its place and we're going to repower up right here. Hit the home button once again we want to make sure we're homed okay. We're back up and we're running we're running again you know. Now there's a situation right next to these two buttons. We have a button called breakaway override. And what that means is if I push this button, 
I want the machine to disregard a, a broke away torch or something like that. I don't, I, I don't want, I want it to be able to, to do it. And you go, why would you have a breakaway override? And the reason for that is, let's say you're cutting and you run off the end of a plate and you drop down into slats or you, you, just, you do something weird, you know? So the machine is, is in the slats. Well, what could happen is we could dislodge the torch, but since we've driven down to the machine, we can't put the torch back on the machine. It just won't fit on there. So in a situation like that, you're going to basically come over here and you're going to click the breakaway override on it it will now allow you to power up the drives so that you can raise the torch up you know now the torch is already up so you're not going to see a raisin but that's why we did it because you can get yourself in a position to where you cannot move the machine it will not let you the torch breakaway will solve that problem and it, it goes red indicating that this is not an advised way to run the machine you're, you're basically in recovery mode let's put the torch back on there Okay, all right, that's pretty much talks about those situations there. Now we go below it, the next box is labeled torch. It has torch on, arc okay, torch height control enabled. These are signals that are coming back from the plasma and the controller telling you that everything is peachy keen, you just keep on getting it. Now, right below those, we have a dry run button. Let's turn back on the drives. Remember, I just moved the torch and killed it. Now right here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this program. We're going to run in dry run mode, you know? So if I hit dry run on and then I turn the machine on, dry run just went green telling us we're in dry run mode. And what that's going to do, it's going to run your program without actually turning on the torch so you're not actually cutting metal. Um, where would you use something like that? Um, if, if, if you're testing, you might have a small piece of metal and you're not sure you're going to be able to cut it out in that area. So let's get an idea. So right now the machine is dry running. Now something interesting right here. I did this on purpose. This is a piece of powder coated um, metal. There is no electrical conductivity from this metal to that tip. You know, like if you had an ohmic only type machine, our machine uses a floating head. So what happened, our machine went down hit the metal, did not have an ohmic connection right there, so it doesn't know the metal's there, but as it kept going down, it triggered off a limit switch and it says, oh, we're on the metal, back up and use that height. That's a pretty slick feature of our machinery, and that was an example, perfect example of how it works without ever having to touch off. Now, if we turn that off, the button to the right of this right here, we can force the torch on and off. I'm not going to do it right now because tips are, they, they don't like to be forced turned on and off because it reduces the life of the tip. Believe me, you hit that button, the torch turns on, you know. Um, we go over here, the next one is called Ohmic Probe Override. And you say, well, why, you know, why would you do that? Um, there are situations to where the ohmic probe is not going to work, and one of them is a water table. If you notice, you know, we know we make machines, air tables, water tables. This is the water table, the stainless steel water table. Well, what happens is th this water splashes up on top of your metal, but you've been cutting on it, so it's got metal particles in it, so the water is now electrically conductive, you know? And what'll happen is you'll go over there and she starts looking to touch off, right? Well, the ohmic probe is active and everything. It hits the top of this water, creates electrical connection, says, oh, I'm on the plate. You're really not. You're on top of this water bubble, you know? But it thinks you are. So it raises up, it fires off, it does its thing. Now, she's going to cut good because as soon as the torch height control kicks in, it's going to go to the right height. But what happened in that instance, you know, when it touched off that bubble and fired up? Basically, you blow out this hole and you go, shoot, you know, my piece is no good. So what you can do is if that's an issue, you're having that problem, and, and to be honest with you, it only happens on a water table, you know, um, you're going to go ahead and click ohmic probe override, and at that point, it's always just going to use the floating head feature. It will not probe the metal itself, and that solves that problem right there. Now, over here on the right, the last button in this box is lock out torch height control. So the question is, why would we ever want to do that? Well, it turns out that if you're cutting very small, intricate pieces and you've got some pretty tight angles right here where the torch is going up and then coming back at a pretty tight angle, well, what happens is you open up a much larger area right there. So the machine thinks there's no metal under it because you've, you've cut a lot of it away. Where would this happen? Let's say you're an artist and you're making real intricate head pieces, you know, key change or whatever. You're doing a lot of fine cutting. You may want to um, lock it out because if you're cutting in a small area, the odds are your plate's not going 
going up and down anyway, the torch high control doesn't matter. So we've given you the ability to lock out torch high control, basically turn it off, and when she starts cutting at that height, she'll stay at that height. Now, going on down below it here, the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is our overrides. When your CAM programs generate code, they're going to tell the, the torch, this is the voltage I want you to track out for the torch height control, this is the speed I want you to go, this is how high I want you to pierce, etc. Well, those are recommended by the, by the manufacturer. Doesn't mean that they're perfect for you. So what you typically do is you're going to hunt around and find the settings that you want to if you want to go that far. So what we've done is we've allowed you to change the voltage, the tracking voltage of the torch height control just by literally dragging the buttons up or down or hitting the plus signal. You could add a volt or two volts or whatever and you'd be shocked at what a few volt difference tracking will make in the quality of your cut. So we've given you the ability to alter that on the fly while you're cutting so you can be cutting miscellaneous test pieces and actually see the difference. We've also done the exact same thing with the feed where you can set it at 5, 10, 25, 50, 100 or you can drag and drop left whatever you want to go to alter that feed rate hunting for that new feed. Now once you've found that new feed other features in version 2, for instance, the automatic update of the tables, like if you like that setting and you want to automatically update your cam tables and sheet cam or whatever, we have all that built in, but that's going to have to be in the next video because that's a little, you know, pretty involved itself. So what we've done in this video, I hope, we've shown you how to turn the machine off, we showed you what happens if you don't home it, if it crashes, how to home it, how to move it around, and how to load a program. So let's call it quits for this one, and let's go ahead and get ready to do our second video, which will talk about the other features. Hey, thanks for watching, and you have a great day.